I mean, we're literally like that. Like, I'm waiting for the call for the RuPaul Drag Race glow up mix up. Like, there's got to be there's got to be a crossover episode. Hi everyone, I'm Dominic Skinner. I'm a judge on BBC Three's Glow Up, and today I'm going to be going through some of the looks from the show as well as my own with Attitude Magazine. This is from episode one, season one, and what you have to remember is, like, I'd never done telly before, like, never done TV, and we had a day rehearsal of just knowing where we stood, and then all of a sudden we walked in on set, and they were like, okay, and action, and I've generally myself and Val looked at each other and thought hang on what, sorry what what's going on what do we actually do <laughs> like no we don't know what we're doing so we then had to start commenting on these on these looks so I look at that and I do get a memory of fear because we really didn't know what we were doing but that look in particular um I, re I like the technique I like, I like the use of product poo we called it uh which is a clay uh, it's like a, a powder that you mix with water and it becomes like a clay and it cracks. It's a bit student-y to use, but you can get some really cool effects. And what Steph did is kind of put it all over the face and then put these neon colours over the top. So it kind of really became quite vibrant and cracked. So I love working with new artists. I love working with young, fresh talent, doing what I can to encourage them and develop them and, and, and sort of help push their careers forward. And that's what I always kind of done and working on this show the artists that we're working with are just incredible the artists I normally work with is is surrounded with fashion so we don't we don't normally play with with prosthetics but on the show they they're playing with prosthetics they're playing with things from the kitchen sink they're playing with with play-doh they are so innovative and so creative and mastering techniques that just blows my mind. So looking at something like that, I think it's like the makeup world is in safe hands. <laughs> there is some really incredible talent coming through. So I was excited to show, but when they said they had kimchi, that's when I got really excited. This is like, okay, I don't care if it gets slated. I don't care if the show gets dropped. I don't care if no one watches. I got to meet kimchi. I'm happy. <laughs> Oh my God. The infamous drag look. So Nikki did this look. <laughs> when she was doing it, we were a little, we were a little concerned. And especially the blue lip. Why Nikki decided to have the blue lip start from the nostrils. It just looks snotty. There's a lot I can say that's wrong with it. However, it got the attention of Trixie and Katya and it has now become, I mean, it's a meme. And once you've become a meme, is there anything better? Probably not, you can retire on that. Being spoken about by, by Trixie and Katya is, I mean, it's like six, what do they call it? Six degrees of separation. I'm basically best friends with RuPaul. That's the way I see it. That's how close we are. <laughs> I mean, we're literally like that. Like I'm waiting for the call for the RuPaul Drag Race glow up mix up. Like there's gotta be, there's gotta be a crossover episode. We knew Ellis was, was talented. We knew we had a really great group of artists in, in the first season. But it's, but this is the clever thing. It's like, you don't want to throw everything out at the first. What you want to do is just keep some things back. And it was almost like Ellis knew that they were going to get to the final. And so Ellis just, I feel like Ellis just kept this hidden away for the right moment. And it gives me goosebumps now thinking about it. It was just, it was incredible. Uh, <laughs> so Val is just one in a million. She's like your best gay friend you can ever possibly have. She is ruder, cruder, and more vile than any gay man that I've ever known. Um, she will say herself, she's a, she's a gay man trapped in a woman's body. For work, for, for working sort of, on set and in the makeup world, you have you really you should wear black. You wear black because you hide in the background. Um, so doing the show has been great because I can wear all my colour and I love wearing colour. This was all about icons and David Bowie was uh, an icon that, that two of the artists chose. One was extremely well executed and 
The other one was executed, but it didn't really tell the story. What I loved about James's look was it was so definite David Bowie. Like it, you looked at it, you know exactly where it comes from. So it's got this really iconic stamp, but then it got elaborated on with the powder spray and then the drag look, the contour. And he took uh, a, a male model and removed the gender, which I thought was so clever to play that into the role of, of, of David Bowie as well. So there was this, it was just a really incredible connection to not just the look, but the artist itself. So I thought it was genius. The other look, there was moments that were, were really clever, like the liner um, and sort of the, the, the ready tone. You look at it and you, you can't really tell it's David Bowie unless someone tells you it's David Bowie. Um, she used Play-Doh. Honestly, I would never have even thought that using a putty would have been a product to use in makeup. But this is the thing. Sometimes education, learning how to do makeup, stops you from expanding and experimenting. And when you get someone like Eve that, right, she wants to create this sort of dragon scale effect, what is she gonna do? Is she gonna spend a week sort of casting a face and then creating a sculpture of, of prosthetics and molding and all this sort of stuff? No, she's gonna get Play-Doh and she's gonna paint it. It's like done, two hours done. And it's so clever. I just, I was blown away by it. I thought it was genius. See, this is what happens if you just stick your hand in the cookie jar. Is he stick your hand in the cookie jar? I don't know, I'm always sticking my hand in the cookie jar. No, if you just, you just gotta play with all the colors in the crayon box, maybe. Um, so you just have to go with it and play and experiment. And, and James didn't really have an understanding of where he wanted to go with the look. He just knew he had to make some ping pong balls. He had some bits of this, bits of that, and he's gonna give it a go. And that's kind of what we wanted. And you could just imagine this as a story that you could see this being developed over a couple of pages. It would look incredible. It would be an incredible spread. We had to keep it secret. No one was allowed to know. She's professional. She turned up. I don't know what time in the morning she was getting ready, but she was fully done. Hair, makeup, perfect. She's professional. She gets the job done. It was amazing. Um, but we kept it quiet, kept it, kept it all secret, hid her in the back. And then when she came out, I mean, the artists, you can see the reaction, they absolutely died. But inside I was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. Uh, and of course I got as many selfies as I could because I do. And uh, she was up for all of them. So oh, this was a good look. This was so beautiful. There's something very pop art about it. I love the thin black lines just outlining everything. Um, the color blend from one to another. There were so many elements to this that were just incredibly beautiful, but at the same time, it shouldn't work. You look at it all individually, it shouldn't go together, but somehow it does, and it's, it's, a, it's a knockout. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I could see where Hannah was trying to go, but yeah. This was Ophelia at her finest. This is just the most beautiful look. That pure white base, which is really, really tricky to do, but the line work was impeccable. And all those tiny little dots, it was, it was just a masterclass in, in, in lines. It's, you know, I remember when it being at art school and you, you know, you'd spend days just with paper and just drawing line after line, trying to get these perfect lines. Um, and there's Ophelia just doing the same thing, but on a face and just creating this beautiful look. It just looked like, it looked like a piece of art. Oh, so this was Ophelia and this was her finale look. Again, it was just the idea of, this was taking the same prosthetic that she used with the maggots and the little skulls, but she reused them, not reused them, but used the same prosthetic, but created these eyes <laughs> instead of maggots. And it was like, it's clever. It's just being able to think beyond the realms of what it's designed for and see what it could be that is just so imaginative and so beautiful. And then to then stitch in these beads, and these like bleeding tears of jewels. The whole thing came together and just looked absolutely stunning, breathtaking.
<laughs> okay, so uh, this this little little number um, this was based off uh, a cardigan I customized. I did a like a charity auction, and uh, I raised I raised five hundred and eighty quid for that cardigan. Uh, all the money went to Positive East uh, in East London, and um, Mac Cosmetics. Uh, matched it. <gasps> this this look. So this look was to sort of celebration of LGBT History Month. It was about the flag. So basically, it was my take on the Pride flag. And instead of doing stripes, I did spots. That was that's basically <laughs> that's basically it. Um, the other thing is is that I wanted to film it, so I needed something simple for someone else to do on me. So my husband, who is not a makeup artist actually did the dots on me. So it took forever. Ah, uh, Halloween, Halloween. Well, Halloween is the makeup artist holiday. It is the one time of the year that you can go all out. You can do things that you would not normally do. I do love Halloween. I start thinking about Halloween around June, July time, because, you know, you've got a plan, you've got prep. Um, and I do love Halloween anyway. Uh, for my 40th birthday, I, I did Halloween Horror Nights uh, in LA because I just, I wanted, they do it better than us. So there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to share, like, and comment.